Have you ever had a situation in Google Sheets where you have a button set up like we have here with my logo and you want to click it, but the user clicks it multiple times, perhaps because they're excited, they just love pressing buttons, they're a first person shooter, maniac, or for whatever reason, and you just want them to, to click that one single time before the process is completed its run. Well, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use lock service to do just that. Let's just code up a simple scenario where we click our Yagi Sun Atade button and when it is clicked, it will update this here after it runs through a process that may take around 10 seconds or so. So if you want to play along, and I encourage that you do, grab a copy of this starter sheet in the link in the description below. When you've got it open and ready to go, we'll get started. Okay, you're back. Great, if you've got the starter sheet at hand, just hit that allow access button and then go into extensions and app scripts and this will open up this menu here probably with a white screen in the background i'm a nerd i like the black screen it's just me okay so what i have here in the sheet already is you'll have your starter function here and then on the sheet you'll notice that there is a script already assigned to it which is button set lock which is this one here so don't click unassign keep it as is because it'll be all hunky-dory let's hit ok Cool. So our goal here is going to be uh, simulating a running of a script that allows us to run the script once, but as that script is running, consecutive clicks from us or another user will be prevented. So first, let's create our little script scenario. So underneath your button set location, let's go ahead and access the spreadsheet. So we can go cons, ss, spreadsheet app. Get active spreadsheet method here. And then what we're going to use to store the number of clicks as they're being clicked is just a simple cache service here. So if you've ever used the property service to prop to permanently store clicks, then the cache service is just, as it says, a temporary way of storing values. So I'm going to create another variable called const cache serve and that's going to be equal to cache service and here we're going to just use the script cache because we want everyone to be able to access it cool underneath that we're going to create a counter that's going to change so we'll use the let variable for this one for a variable that does change and that'll be counter that's equal to cache serve dot and here we're going to use the get method here to get our counter value and here the cache service value name or key name is going to be called counter now we haven't generated that because it's not our first time that we've generated it so we want a also a condition that if cache service get counter does not exist so it'll return undefined or null we want to say let's just make this zero so we'll put a little or pipe in here double pipe and we'll just say zero. So if our cache service counter is not found, then we just want to return zero into our counter variable. Okay, so on our first run through, let's just say if counter equals zero, then we'll just send a little toast, a little message out to our users with a UI and say ss.toast counter is starting at zero nice so that just indicates we're going to start at zero and let's just go over here and delete that zero out so you see that happening in the process then we could say ss.get range and here because we're calling this from the spreadsheet core we need to declare the sheet name so we'll say sheet one exclamation mark and that's going to be in our cell c16 c16 and let's just set the value set value to the counter cool so let's say uh, we've set that value and we want to update that value before we store it by running a rather long elongated process here we can use the utility service from Google Apps Script and use the sleep method from that utility service and set the number of seconds we want to allow our script to sleep for. So here we're going to use it for a thousand milliseconds, one second, 
And let's just add an extra zero in here and that'll give us 10 seconds it'll sleep for. Simulating a process. And then we're going to just increase our counter by one. So counter plus plus. Before we return it and store it back in the cache. So we'll say cache serve. And here we're going to use the put method here. And in that put method, we are going to use the same key string counter to store it. And what are we going to store? Our counter. And for case service, whatever is stored in there only is temporary. And we probably only want to store it say, for, say, 15 seconds before we call it back. Okay, and finally, we'll just make a toast to say we're done. So execution. Okay. Okay, let's hit save. Okay, so the first time we run, you're going to run the script the first time. You may, you'll may you have to go through the authorization process. Once that's done, uh, give it another click and you can see the results. So we'll just do this one time. And you can see counter is starting at zero. Great. And it's waiting. It's going through the 10 second pause. And then execution is complete. What's happening here is it is waiting for the entire period of time for this utility to sleep. So we could get that out a little bit faster by going uh, spreadsheet app and flushing the service to say, hey, we've done here. Go away, go ahead and send this off to the sheet. So flush, wait save, and let's just delete that out again and click our button. So that's happening instantaneously after we've flushed it. Uh, it's sleeping and running some uh, complex process that your ingenious brain has come up with before uh, adding one to the counter and then sending it to the cache service. You click it again and now it's increased by one because we've done it within this 15 second period. A few moments later. And then we're gonna do it again. And it's up by two. But wait a minute, what happens if I'm a little bit of an overzealous clicker and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna click a couple of times here. What's going to happen now? So we've got all these processes that are being clicked one after the other and really slowing down the system. And none of these processes, well, you would expect after each one of these processes to update what's going on in the cell here, but they're clearly not, it's staying at three. But if we click again, we'll get a four shortly thereafter. So, that's not working out as expected, so we may have to handle for that. But before we do, let's look at another quick scenario. Imagine if I put this a utility sleep after the counter. So now we'll put this after the counter and after it's being stored in the cache service. And let's see what happens here. So now we will uh, send the data to here the first time, and then it will update the counter by one and then store that value by one into the cache service and then run some complex process, maybe send an email telling your best friends in the world that you've just updated the counter by one. So let's go ahead and run our script now. And we're just a little bit excited about running our script because, you know, we are sending this off to our friends. And you can see I'm clicking a bunch of times. We're only up to four on the count here, but there's more than four running scripts at the moment as well. So there's some race conditions going on at the moment, causing the code not to run as it should either. So we're trying to stop this from happening. So each time you click one after the other, these values will occur. So how do we resolve these two possible scenarios? Let's introduce lock service now. So lock service allows us to create a lock on a particular portion of your script, preventing other users perhaps, or other people that are using the same document, other users using the entire script from executing that process while a current execution is being carried out on that section of script. It doesn't work for the entire script, it just works for an, just a particular section that you allocate that should not be run at that time. So the first thing we need to do to call this is we're going to make a constant variable called lock, and that's gonna be equal to the lock service. So lock service. And here we have a choice of three types of locks that we can carry out. The first one is the get document lock. So anyone working on the same document this is allocated to, whenever they run a script inside that document, that script won't run if another concurrent user is of that document is running the script. The next option here is get script lock. Now for any time this script is used, whether it's in this document or another document, 
document or independently, there will be no consecutive uses of this script if the script is currently being run. run. Now, if you just want one single user at a time to not be able to run the same script while the script is being run, then you can use the get user lock. Now, for our purposes, probably get document lock and get script lock are the best. We may as well use get script lock. So let's go ahead and do that. This doesn't mean the lock has started from this point. We need to do one or two things. First, we could either say use the method wait lock or the method try lock. So there's more details on uh, wait lock in the written version of this tutorial, but we'll just go on and use the try lock and I'll explain what goes on there. Create another constant called success. So if it's successful, then we'll use, we'll call lock class and then we'll use the try lock. So try lock takes one argument and that's the time out in milliseconds. Now, do we want to wait for a period of time and have the script try and test to see if it has another chance to run the script below it? Or do we just want it to go, oh, there's a lock on, let's shut things down. And then the user can try again a little bit later. Well, for our purpose, we don't want them to have a multiple attempts. So we can set this lock time to zero. Now, uh, try lock will return either a, a boolean true or false. If it's true, it means there is no lock on it and you're good to proceed. If it's false, it means there is a lock on it and it won't be able to proceed. It's not going to throw an error though, which is good for us, whereas wait lock will. So now we can make a if statement. So we can say if not success, so exclamation mark success, then we just want to return and let's return with a message. We'll say ss.toast and we'll say locked. Okay. So now we also need to indicate where we want to unlock our service. Down the bottom of our script is where we want to unlock. So we need to call here. So lock and then we say release lock. Now you could by rights leave this out, but it's probably not good practice if you want to run through the entire service and then do nothing. But we will demonstrate a couple of things here so you can see what release lock means. So let's hit save now and go back to our process. So I'm going to hit click again and run it multiple times. And you can see the finished script up here completing a lot faster and you can see lock occurred as well, a lot faster as well. And we're getting our update more regularly and you can still it's still telling us it's locked so those executions aren't taking up as much memory because they're finishing straight away and then dropping off and we're still getting the updates that we want as expected until that lock warning stops there we go cool let's go ahead and uh, move our utilities perhaps up here and let's delete this out again and we'll just run our button we'll run a bunch of executions again And in this case, you'll see that I can continue clicking these buttons and our scripts will run, but they'll finish very quickly. But it won't be until after this 10 seconds occurs that the counter will increase by one and then store that in the cache for us to be able to update the next series here. So there's two examples of how this works. Okay, so one last thing, we could move this just to prove our point, this if statement, so hit control C to copy, and head down here to control V to paste. And we'll just delete this one right up here. So let's run this scenario again. We'll go ahead and click. And you can see I've run this a few times and we've still got the lock occurring and the script is finishing up early. 
And that's because it's not going through this process here. It's skipping this because we've set our lock at this stage here, and then we've released our lock at this stage here. And then any script that occurs after that release lock is still being run by anyone who has access to click the button. That's one way of protecting a button from being overly abused in a Google Sheet using Google Apps Scripts and Lock Service. I'd love to know in the comments below how you might use this in your own projects. And if you've enjoyed this tutorial, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, subscribe. Until next time.